Hi everyone. So I just wanted to summarize the introductory lesson to trigonometry with right triangles. Now there's a bunch of vocabulary words that it's really important that you get comfortable with. Specifically, sine, cosine, tangent. Those are the trigonometric functions. Right? Sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now here's what we mean. It's really important that you're comfortable with identifying the sides of a triangle. So in this first little example here, we're talking about the sides relative to angle X. Here's what I mean. I'm going to highlight angle X just so that it's nice and clear. Now we're going to label opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Well, we know that the hypotenuse is always across from that right angle in a right triangle. So we can label this automatically as our hypotenuse, All right? Now, how about opposite and adjacent? Well, if we're talking about angle X, right? The side that's opposite angle X is the side that's across from angle X. So this is gonna be our opposite. And we know that adjacent means next to so this last side is going to be next to angle X. See how it connects? And obviously our hypotenuse also connects, but our hypotenuse is going to stay our hypotenuse. So that's how we label our sides. Let's look at the second one where we're talking about the sides relative to angle Y. So again, our hypotenuse in a right triangle is always going to be the same. It's always the side that's across from that right triangle. Okay, so we can label that our hypotenuse and the side opposite, that's gonna be the one across from the angle we're talking about. So if we're talking about angle Y, then right here is gonna be our opposite. Okay, and then our adjacent is the one next to why that's not our hypotenuse so it's right here so if you can become comfortable with that that'll make everything a little bit easier for you okay so there's a couple things that you're going to be asked within this unit to find in regards to right triangles you might be asked to find the measure of an angle or you might be asked to find the length of a side so to find a measure of an angle on your calculator you're going to use the inverse trig function keys. So those are the ones with the, the negative 1, right? So we're going to have sine negative 1, cosine negative 1, tangent negative 1. Make sure that you know how to find those on your calculator. On the TI-84 um, graphing calculator, they're written in blue right above the buttons of sine, cosine, and tangent. So you're going to have to hit second before you click them. But obviously everybody's calculator might be a little bit different, so just make sure you can find that. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do when you do these problems is you're going to label the sides of the triangle, the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, just like we just did before. Then you're going to pick which trig function you're using, and then you're going to calculate. So let's actually go through an example. So what it's asking is to find the measure of angle X. Now, it's asking to find the measure of an angle, not the length of a side, so we're going to use the inverse trig function keys. Okay, but before we do anything, let's go ahead and label the sides of the triangle. Across from this right angle, we have our hypotenuse, as always. And the 12 is going to be relative to x, since it's across, that's going to be our opposite. Right? And since the other side isn't labeled, we don't really need to do anything with that. Now, if we're dealing with opposite and hypotenuse, which trig function are we going to use? Well, which one deals with opposite and hypotenuse? We're going to go ahead and use sine. Okay, so we know the sine of x is going to equal our opposite over hypotenuse, and the values of that are 12 and 24, but since we're looking for the measure of an angle, we're going to use the inverse. So in your calculator, you're going to use that 
right, the sine negative 1 key that's written there, and type in your fraction, 12 over 24. And when you type that in, you should get 30 degrees as your answer. So the measure of angle X is 30 degrees. Okay, now moving on to another example. Right, the same thing. Let's label, let's first label the sides and then see what we can do. So based on what's given, right, we're looking, it says find the measure of angle X, which in this case is up here. We know that 20 is going to be our hypotenuse since it's across from that right angle. And relative to angle X, that 13, that side's going to be our adjacent side. So which trig function deals with hypotenuse and adjacent? We have cosine, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So we know that the cosine of x equals the adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, that's 13 over 20. But since we're asked to find the measure of angle x, to find the measure of an angle, we're using the inverse trig function keys. So the inverse cosine of 13 over 20, if you type that into your calculator, you should get about 49.5 five degrees. So therefore the measure of angle X is 49.5 degrees. All right, let's do one more. Okay, so same exact thing. It's asking us to find the measure of angle X. In this case, the X is down here. So let's label our sides. Relative to angle X, what's given to us? The 14 well, this side is across, so we know that's going to be our opposite. All right, and the 48, right, it's next to, and we know that this is our hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. So if you need to label the one that's not given to you, that's fine. 48 is going to be our adjacent side. So what's given to us? The opposite and the adjacent. So, which trig function deals with opposite and adjacent? Tangent. And again, we're asked to find the measure of angle x. Since we're finding the measure of an angle, we're going to use the inverse. We know that tangent of x is going to be the opposite over adjacent. So in this case, 14 over 48. But since we're using the inverse, we have the inverse tangent of 14 over 48, right? Put that in your calculator. And when you do that, you get about 16.3 degrees, right? So the measure of angle X we just found to be 16.3 degrees. Right? Um, the other thing to just note is make sure that you always close those parentheses in your calculator because when things get more complicated, I, want, I don't want anybody getting confused. All right? So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Have a great day. Bye-bye.